G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today I'd like to pass on to you a diagnostic technique that I've been using for quite some time. It'll help both the professionals as well as you DIY guys. What I'm talking about today relates to a vehicle that I worked on some time ago. It was a VE Commodore, I reckon it was about a 2010 with a three litre engine in it. After a full system scan, it came up with the following codes, P0050, P0056, P0155 and P0158, all relating to oxygen sensor heater circuits. Now before bringing it in to me, this guy had replaced the oxygen sensors, but it still came up with all these various codes. So the diagnostic techniques that I'd like to share with you are very basic. They're nothing exciting, and anyone who has a few basic tools should be able to do it. All right, so there's bank one, uh, heater one and heater two. They're clearly drawing some current. And over here, bank two, heater one and heater two, no current being drawn whatsoever. Okay, for the sake of the exercise, I'm on bank one, just to show you guys what a good uh, oxygen sensor and circuit should look like. So here is the oxygen sensor itself. You can see he goes down right down there. And I've gone into the uh, heater circuit. How do I know which is the heater circuit? Let's have a look and see what the wires are. There's two white ones. There's a gray one and there's a black one. So the ones that are too white, too black, whatever they are, they are the heater circuit. I've back probed it into there, gone into my multimeter, and hey presto, I've got 10.2 ohms. That's an indicator that the heater itself in the oxygen sensor is okay. Now I'm not concerned about the oxygen sensor itself at the moment because it's a heater circuit fault. So this is a good side. And another test that we can do is to see if the ECU is uh, directing or driving that heater and that will do it uh, via pulse width modulation. So I'm just going to hook up a globe to that now and we should, or in the uh, ECU side of things, that's this connector over here, and we're going to hook up a globe there and we should end up with some sort of flashing or pulsing or a long time on, then it'll gently go off one or the other. So I'll just hook that up, that'll give you an indication of what it should look like then we'll go over to bank two and see what that guy over there is doing. So next I'm going to hook up a globe to see what the ECU is pumping out, making sure that we get some sort of flashing or some sort of pulsation of the globe itself. That will tell me that the drivers within the ECU are okay. You shouldn't use a globe because it's going to blow up the ECU. Well, not so much. Let me show you. We need Ohm's law. Now we know the voltage of the vehicle, pretty much around about 12 volts. And we also know what the resistance was. Now that was, if I remember rightly, about 10.7, I believe. And therefore, the current that will be flowing through that circuit to the heater will be about 1.1 uh, amps. If I use my globes, I've actually listed what these globes are. As you can see here, uh, that guy there is uh, 0.42 of an amp. Um, and if I put the two together, uh, we've got 2.1 amps, upside down of course, and this guy here by himself is 1.7 amps. So I'm quite safe to use this guy here. Okay, so as mentioned, here's my oxygen sensor connector. That guy there goes back to the ECU. Now I was just about to hook up that globe that I showed you, and I started putting in a, a connector like this guy here. I was just going to hook that in there. And if you have a really close look, have a look, the two, two terminals, I believe, are these two here. Okay, now if you look at the lower one, I'll just zoom in a bit there for you. This is the good side, remember? Now one of those terminals is actually snuck back in the connector. It's, um, where's my fat finger? Right there. That guy there has gone back into the connector. These guys are still stuck up proud, as they should be, but this guy's actually slid backwards. So is that an indication of what the... Uh, Bank two will be like. This is the good side, remember? So we'll sort this out and make sure that it's okay before we head over to bank two. I've got my light hooked up here. Now, as I mentioned, I'm just running, a, what is it, 0.42 of an amp uh, through my globe here, so that's fine. It's not gonna damage anything. I've gone into my oxygen sensor uh, wiring from the ECU, so that's our uh, heater circuit. So as I mentioned, this should come on or flash or do something along those lines as an indication that the 
drivers and the wiring going to the oxygen sensor heater circuit is in good condition. Let's crank it up and see what happens. See that pulsing for a sec? There we go, look at that, eh? So that's, remember that duty cycle that we mentioned before? It was like 75% or something. Right hand side is doing what he's meant to do. All right, so just mirroring the tests that we did on the other side, we're now in the heater circuit. You can see the two white wires there. And I've got a good connection in here. Let's have a look at what our multimeter says. This here is an open circuit with its heater. Like seriously, this guy was meant to have replaced it uh, already. So where did he get his oxygen sensors from? eBay? I don't know. Um, so <laughs> this is a dead oxygen sensor. If everything is working okay, we should see a pulsation of that globe. The ECU is okay. The wiring is okay. Okay, now we're going on a max adventure here, guys. We're going to slide up under the vehicle and have a look at sensor number two. Now this guy is our post sensor and it looks all nice and shiny. Yes, apparently it's been replaced. But let's just slide up here. Can you see what I see? I might zoom in for you with a bit more lightage there. Uh, where's my zoom button? There he is. Can you see that? <laughs> it's not clipped in all the way. You can clearly see that it's not clipped in. Let's just give that, oh goodness me, <laughs> I just touched it with my thumb and it fell off. Okay, so what's the issue? Oh my goodness me, I just found another fault. <laughs> Sorry. See this little terminal here, this female terminal in the oxygen sensor itself is pushed all the way backwards. And let's have a look, what do we have? Well, we have bank one, obviously we've got some current. Bank two, we've got current now that they're all connected and they're not broken, of course. Um, so we've got, uh, and also we've got our duty cycle happening here and that's working correctly and it's commanded on. I hope those diagnostic techniques have been of use to you guys in the workshop, your professional guys as well as you DIY guys. In some cases I've found the only solution to these oxygen sensor problems are to go genuine. There's so many aftermarket ones that are just failing all the time. I hope you got something from this video today guys and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel, give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Of course don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. You can catch up with us on Facebook as well as Instagram, see what's happening both in the workshop as well as the electronics lab. Hey, while you're hanging out for that long awaited next video, why don't you cruise through the channel and see what other videos that might interest you. Until next time guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I'll catch you later.